Hey everyone, and welcome to another Game Explain discussion. I'm your host, Derek Bittner, and I'm joined today by Chuck Conroy. Hey everybody, thank you for having me. No problem, and we're here to discuss the newest trailer for Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. So let's get started. Alright, Emil, so we had a brand new Pokemon trailer uh, released on Friday, as well as uh, a little showcase of um, the new Photo Club mode, thanks to Game Informer, as well as a trailer for the first new uh, Z-Move introduced to the game. So, on the surface, it seems like there's a lot of new information, but when you really look at it, they didn't actually tell us that much. Uh, but I'm curious what you thought of just all that they, they showed us this, uh, the, this past Friday. It was nice to see more actual footage, but you're right. We're, we're not far away from the release of this game, and we just, we know nothing about it. I'm, I gotta be honest, I have read up on what this game is, but I'm still not really sure I understand what this game is supposed to be, having read up on it and having watched all the footage that's come out at this point, because it's Sun and Moon in an alternate timeline with a different story, but we don't know how different, and it doesn't sound like it's a sequel, but it also doesn't sound like it's a yellow version. I, I really don't know. They they haven't told us a lot. The It's really funny. The most defined thing in the entire game that we know of in terms of gameplay is the new photo mode. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Uh, that's a little sad on its own. Like the, the sort of feeling I'm getting from it, the, the only idea that I can really come up with is maybe this is sort of like a director's cut and just having two versions like this is what it was supposed to be like like it's uh, so hard to really say though i i hope not what i want is i want it to be different enough that there's still reason to go back and play sun and moon i want it to be a black two white two situation where you might still go back and play black and white for the story. You might still go back and play black and white because it offers a different experience in that different Pokemon are available. Those things are confirmed that it will have at least somewhat different of a story and it will have more Pokemon available to you during the main plot. But again, to what extent, we don't know. And there's also the fact that Black 2 and White 2 takes place in a lot of radically different areas where it doesn't reuse all of Unova for its main plot. But here we haven't seen a new island or anything. Like, I, I saw your analysis and... I guess the islands have a new sandbar too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like I saw a cave here, uh, here and there, and we have like new buildings popping up throughout the the, the region. And there's like an offshoot off off of uh, Mount Lanakila, that kind of thing. That was cool. I I didn't notice that personally. That was really cool, and I'm curious what that is. But yeah, I'm not quite sure what they'll do with that one. Hopefully, hopefully something. But I I there was part of me as soon as I saw that map that I was quite disappointed because I was the one that came up with the idea. I was like, oh, maybe Akala Island had a massive volcanic eruption and it got into split into smaller islands. And, you know, all that happened. And, of course, people said, like, no, that's just based on the Krozma's eyes. That's what that whole symbol means, despite it looking very similar to the, uh, the trial little uh, symbol. So I was like, mm, bummer, you're probably right. And, of course, they were right. But it would have been so much more interesting to have the islands broken up in that way and to see how it changed for that because as it is now you're right there really isn't that much different about it i mean when you get to the nitty gritty and see there they like they changed up the color palette a little bit there's other differences there but on the whole we're kind of looking at the same game the map screen is orange <laughs> yeah it's very orange <laughs> That's for sure. Holy crap. Um, I, I, I do think it looks pretty, though. But before we uh, get too far off topic, in the way of the uh, new footage that we saw, um, Komo's signature move, a uh, signature Z move, the, the Clangorous Soul Blaze, doing huge damage, huge dragon type damage, with it basically being a guaranteed ancient power where you get all stats up at the end. The things you have to do to make a dragon fighting type good in a fairy type environment, just holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. Like, I did hear that it was ended up being one of the weakest dragon types ever put out. And so, yeah, yeah that's that's how it's, they made it competitive. <laughs> yeah, Komo'o was not played a whole lot. Um, actually, you want to know a dragon type that was gimped on its I instantaneously, despite it actually being pretty decent, was Guzzlord. Oh, really? Guzzlord, I like Guzzlord's stats, I like Guzzlord's moves, I think it's fun to use, but just the fact that fairy types already existed, it was quad weak to them, it was dragon and dark type mm. offensively, it's, there wasn't a lot that could be done there, and with how rampant fairies are, a lot of people just saw other dragons as better to use and more safe. 
Yeah, that, that would that's very true. It's that that fairy type really does throw in a new wrinkle to everything. And it uh, does. It's it it screwed Komo'o a lot though, but just the fact that they had to give him that is just really <laughs> funny to me. I want I do wonder like it's it's ridiculous what it does. But I do wonder, like, is that enough to, to like, hmm, maybe I should get that. <laughs> I, I think it does have some potential, and it might make it a little bit better, of course. Um, there is, if it is, a, I'm sure it's a dragon-type move, though, but it's, you know, still kind of fairy-type immune, if that's the case, even if that is. Um, mm, that is true. Making absolutely sure on this. Uh, why is my internet slow? Oh, right no, now? It, it, is, it is definitely a dragon-type move, because they yeah, specifically okay. showed him using it against two other dragons. And I was just trying to make absolutely sure that it was that, and it wasn't like else. I know that it said it's super effective on the Salamence and the Garchomp, though, but I was just trying to make sure that I wasn't remembering it wrong and that it really was Dragon-type, though, but no, it is, mm. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, that's that's cool. That's a nice little change, but again, that's just a tiny little thing. Like, it's not quite as exciting as what a new Mega Evolution was in uh, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire because of the pure potential of that plus you know we've got a brand new design we got a fun new dance out of it at least I mean, if you want to attach a bunch of symbols to yourself and go nuts there you go you got the dance move for you <laughs> oh yeah the fun the z the, the z moves i'm kind of surprised no uh, at least nobody that i've seen i've i looked this up a little while ago to see if anyone had done it that no one had done a dance video of all the z move dances just work together <laughs> in some way, but yeah, I do agree with you that it's not quite as exciting as a new Mega Evolution, and I do kind of wonder if we're ever going to get more new Mega Evolutions just because not only did it take a huge backseat in Sun and Moon, not only was it kind of a controversial inclusion in X and Y to a lot of people, but you kind of also have the fact that with all the items that you'd have to collect for it and mm -hmm. all the ways these items would have to be given out to the player, it would get kind of ridiculous over time if you just kept introducing new ones and weren't phasing out old ones and nobody wants old Pokemon phased out, so... Yeah, it's, it's, it's a interesting balance that they have to strike, and uh, yeah, I, I can kind of see why it's got kind of left by the wayside for now. Who knows what they'll do in the future. Uh, as far as the Mega Evolutions. I, I think Z-Moves are a much safer bet in the way of expanding in the future. And on top of that, you also have the fact that um, uh, X and Y barely introduced any new moves. So with Sun and Moon, they went absolutely crazy. <laughs> if you count all the Z versions of all the different moves, I think it has the most new moves of any Pokemon game. Oh, wow. I mean, it would, it does make sense. Because, like, even though you argue that, you know, stuff like maybe, like, Z-Splash or Z-Tail Z Glow and stuff like that might use... Um, generic animations and might just change the buff that you get there's the fact that so many of those moves give radically different buffs like z splash for instance is actually a really well liked move and it's just funny that it buffs you in the way that it does <laughs> that is true i was so i was shocked when i saw exactly what it did i was like all right splash is useful kind of so that works you, you see some people running it on gyarados at least yeah so. it's true so, I mean, it really did change up some tactics and what people were trying to do for it. So, that is to be appreciated. And, of course, we are being promised more new Z moves uh, with this. I'm not quite sure, other than the fact that they get to release a new toy now thanks to the Z Power Ring, I'm not quite sure exactly what it has to offer, other than the fact that maybe it's story related since it, you know, has the same black color as the Necrozma. Maybe it's. Maybe you don't meet Tapu Koko at the beginning of the game, and there's some sort of event with Necrozma that gives it to you that makes it different. It the Mega Ring was different from game to game. It was the Mega Bangle, I think it was, in Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, and mm -hmm. not the Mega Ring anymore. Plus, um, every character that used Mega Evolution had different items. Like Maxi had the Mega Glasses. Um, Archie, I think, had the Mega Anchor. Um, there was the Mega Pendant, the Mega Stick Pin. There were a lot of things like that, so mm -hmm. it might just be the same thing as that where they are switching up how it looks a little bit for each game just to kind of make it have its own identity. That would make sense as well. I, you know, that, you, it's funny you talk about that opening because I found myself wondering about that as well. It's like, are you going to meet Tapu Koko this time around? Because, well, you don't... It doesn't seem like you meet... Ho like at least not meet Hala in the same place since you're not getting the starters on that platform in Iki Town. It's by a fence or overlooking the ocean, which is visually interesting, but it's like, why that change? I don't know, and there doesn't seem to be anyone else standing nearby. It's not... It doesn't seem like anyone gives them to you, though, but like, why would they just be out there on their own unless maybe it's like Diamond and Pearl where Rowan leaves his suitcase behind or something? I'm... Yeah, I mean, the only thing that I could come up with is maybe they run off and you got to go find them 
and that's where you find him or something to that degree and like hey you found him why don't you pick a partner or something to that degree but again it just uh, I mean we see you picking up the Rowlet so you can still have that little thing of that little bonding moment between them but I don't know they made such a big deal about the Pokemon has to choose you as well I, I do wonder how much the story is going to be remixed this time around. That one detail is pretty promising, the fact that it's changed up that much. Um, but everything else that we've seen, I guess not really so much. It's really strange. Like, I remember that you showed that some characters that we um, that mm -hmm. didn't have big roles in the first game seem to have bigger roles this time around, which I do like. Mm -hmm. uh, Black 2 and White 2 did that to an extent as well. Yeah, having Kahili there and having uh, Ryuki as well and giving them something to do. I mean, who knows? Maybe it'll be as simple as uh, Colrest showing up and like, hey, I'm here. Bye. <laughs> Never seeing him again. <laughs> Let Colrest do something this time around. I I thought Colrest was going to... Leading up to the release of X and Y, I thought Colrest was going to be the main antagonist of that game because of his wanting to bring up potential in Pokemon and it's the game that introduces Mega Evolution. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's kind of a good fit for him, but he didn't appear. And then when he did appear again, he's just like, oh, hi, my name's Colrest. Bye. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So hopefully they do something a little bit more with Kahili and Ryuki. I'm not positive on that one. Like, Kahili's in a cave and she seems to be teaching you the Z-move. Uh, whether, whether it's, I don't know whether it's for the flying type since you could uh, just find it in the wild before. Or a specific bird. Uh, who knows? My personal guess is Toucanon because her, uh, her golf club has mm -hmm. been um, modeled after Toucanon's beak. Yes, I did notice that as well, and that would be, that seems like the most likely guess. Although, I don't know what the general opinion on two cannon is. I love that damn thing, though. Like, as soon as I got two cannon and had, what was it, Beak Blast, I'm like, well, you're a part of, part of my party now, at least for the main game. I'm, I'm not, of course, I don't know how it works competitively, but for the main game, holy crap, that move was good. Oh, it's at least fun, definitely. Uh, skill, uh, skill Link is also a fantastic ability, just a really fun one to use there, and it mm -hmm. learns Bullet Seed. I think <laughs> it gets, I'm wanting to say it gets Rock Blast. It gets, I, yeah, Rock Blast. It yeah, does get I think Rock so. Blast. So, yeah, it, it had a lot of potential. It was a, it was just a lot of fun to use with a great variety. Yeah, not not a not an amazing Pokemon by any means, though, but fun nonetheless. Mm -hmm. And, hey, if a fun Pokemon gets a, its own unique Z-move, I'm totally down for that. Of course, this is all speculation. For all we know, maybe she's teaching it to, I don't know, Lediba. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. let's make Lady and actually worthwhile, sure. <laughs> oh, gosh. I... <laughs> Ledian is so... If I may go off on a tangent, oh, go for is it. awful. I have friends who, um, who, do, who do, do a lot of Nuzlocks and challenge runs and stuff like that, and they're always very quick to defend weaker Pokemon that a lot of people don't like, because... They had at least one Nuzlocke run where, hey, it was actually useful. I, I have a friend who who loves Illumise and Minen because they worked out so well for him. Maryland, actually. Um, mm -hmm. He loves those guys. I have never met a single person like this who doesn't think Ledian is just pure concentrated disappointment. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's so funny. Even the people I know that do challenge runs and use Pokemon they would never use and find ways to make them good... Even they agree that Ledian is just garbage. Because mm -hmm. I've had that same experience too. I never had thought much about Farfetch, and then I did a Nuzlocke run, and oh, oh my gosh, I really love Farfetch. It's awesome. <laughs> you use, know, use Far you, use Farfetch in X and Y, and X and Y he's really usable in the time that you get that, him. And that's like that's the that's the exact time I used him in that. In oh, that, in that okay, run. that makes that makes a lot of sense. Because yeah, when you get him in X and Y, he is over. Oh my gosh, because like him having Aerial Ace so early, it was like, holy crap. But no, I he totally... He's so strong for when you get him. He's the best thing... That, that far-fetched Quacklin. Quacklin is the best thing that ever happened to far-fetched. <laughs> yeah. But sorry, we're getting very up yeah. topic here and just get, talking about Pokemon we actually, like. Actually, <laughs> speaking of which, give far-fetched a freaking... Uh, either a Lola form or a Z-move. Like, give that, po give that Pokemon some love, for God's sakes. Are you of the opinion that we're going to get new Alolan forms in this? I personally don't, but... Do you think that we'll get new Alolan forms if, say, Rockruff can get a new form? I think so. I I, I do. don't think we're going to get a lot of them, but I could definitely see potentially more Alolan forms for other Gen 1 Pokemon, maybe some Gen 2s. Uh, it's hard to yeah. say for sure. You do have 
they, they do mention that they get a lot of immigrants from Johto, mm-hmm. and I would think that immigrants from Johto would move with their Pokemon, so it's mm-hmm. a little odd that there hasn't been some multi-generational thing where they adapted to the conditions of Alola, and there just aren't any of those. There's actually, um, I was wanting to bring attention to this, there's barely any Johto Pokemon in the Alola decks at all. I think I counted it one time, and it was like nine oh, versus the other... Versus Kanto having almost all 150 of its Pokemon and all the other regions having at least, like, 20 or so. Like, oh, no, maybe it wasn't Johto. I, I know that Johto was one of the lesser regions in its representation. I think it was actually Kalos that had basically nothing. Mm, yeah, Kalos was pretty bare bones as far as what was in uh, Alola. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's funny, but I... I I don't foresee there being a lot, because if there was a lot, the, the way that the build up towards Sun and Moon, I think the reason why it just feels so empty as far as what is getting news on Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon is that we were constantly getting updates on Sun and Moon. But a lot of those updates were kind of minor in the grand scheme because they were showing new Pokemon. Just Pokemon after Pokemon and all the new Alolan forms, and that's what just carried that hype train all the way up till release. And be- and maybe because we're not getting a lot of new Alolan forms or anything like that, that's why they're holding off on that. But it also makes me curious, but once again, what's different? <laughs> yeah, it's... We know of the Necrozma Fusions, mm-hmm. which is not the two out there of a concept because we've had that before, um, where legendary Pokemon were capable of fusing, but now we have... The rock roof, the the new uh, sorry, the new um, lichen rock rock, form. Yeah, Yeah. we have the new lichen rock form as the only new thing that they've announced since then. And I get that maybe, maybe the Solgaleo and Lunala forms were a big deal, and maybe you don't want to overdo it with the big details and maybe reveal some smaller ones next though. But I just, honestly, I don't get what the point is of that new form. I get that it's uh, dusk form and it's while it's transforming into the werewolf form. I understand what it is but I just don't really get the point you give it a third form but supposedly only event rock roughs are capable of evolving into this thing mm-hmm. so what's the po- like I don't understand it yeah the only you can only get it if you get it within the first couple months like they've done with other Pokemon before um, I I remember that mega Blaziken was like that before being made widely available in a later game but I just think it's strange that that it's one of only three new Pokemon that we know of, and it only evolves from seemingly event Rockruffs, when yeah. it's like, why couldn't this evolve from, I don't know, Rockruffs that have their hidden ability through some in-game means, or something along those lines, or yeah. just maybe caught on a certain island, or heck, evolve during these hours of the day? <laughs> just, I can think of five other ways that they could do yeah. this. And Other I, than make it event exclusive, it just feels strange that they wanted to do that for something that's not even really that big of a change in the first place. Yeah, I, I mean, it kind of feels that way just because they are they are promoting the form through the anime. Like, Ash just had his, his rock rough evolve into this dust form. So mm-hmm. that might have an effect, um, it maybe in the same way that we got uh, Ash Greninja, but I'm not maybe positive on that one. It, it's It's... Again, it seems, makes it, I don't know, makes it feel lesser because it is such an event. Because the thing is, I probably won't use it. Like, I'll probably evolve it to get to that point and then I'll move on. Because I do want to have a completely new team and, you know, as different as Dust Form would be. But It it doesn't feel as special as Ask Greninja did and I I, I don't think, um, I don't think it'll quite be as, I don't think it'll be as big of a deal as that by a long shot personally. I will say though, I'm very happy that another Pokemon is getting Accelerock. Yeah. Because that's a fun attack. No, it proved pretty useful in it, and having counter along with it too, like it, it has a lot of potential. I like that it combines those two and could do, you know, a very a couple various things. Uh, but again, it's just not not something that attracts me to it. A new Alolan form would do more for me, and um, unfortunately, you know, Photo Photo Club is cute and all, but I'm probably never going to use that. Like, maybe once I'll use it. I don't know. I, I tend to play around with those features a lot when I replayed um, when I replayed Sun and Moon a few months ago. I remember I just went nuts with the character customization. That's all I was spending my money on. So, <laughs> maybe I'll get into it personally. It The interface kind of reminds me of Happy Home Designer, how you shift stuff around on the bottom screen by moving the blocks. It <laughs> kind of does, but 
Yeah, I, I know it's definitely not going to be for everyone, and that, like I said, is the most defined new thing in this game that we know <laughs> any concrete details about. Yeah, and they did say we spent a lot of time on this. It's like, oh, that's that, that's great, guys. That's that's really great. I mean, granted, being able to pose with every single Pokemon, that takes a lot. You know, there's a lot that you can do with that. And, you know, it's cool that you get more options as you go through. There's constant progression with it. And you can kind of show off how far you are. That sort of thing. Like, there's things to enjoy about that but I don't know it's just something uh, it just seems like oh that's cute that's that's really that's really all I have to say about it <laughs> it does kind of go in line with your theory about maybe this being a director's cut of what Sun and Moon was intended to be but just wasn't able to be on its time and budget because there is data that hints about being able to walk with any Pokemon or having any Pokemon on the overworld Mm -hmm. um, in the data, there's models and walking animations for every single Pokemon that's, it's stored in the same location as the walking animations that are shown for when you're taking photos of the Pokemon using the photo finder feature. Um, they had this done for basic, I think it was basically every Pokemon. I remember seeing GIFs uploaded of even Bulbasaur's walking animations and stuff like that from oh, that wow. feature. So it might be that they were intending to have this photo feature in there in the first place, though, but it just got scrapped and some of the data was left over and it became this. That could be. I mean, the thing is, they are teasing hard about Pokemon being able to, being able to follow you because there's they, they there's, this is the second time now with the trailer that they've just barely teased that a Pokemon is following you, but then they don't actually... But, but if, if you look closely, they're not actually. They're following a set path. They're showing how more Pokemon are in the overworld, but they keep teasing it. And I'm trying to remember, like, look over, like, think over the footage. And I don't think we've ever had an example of your trainer running around after getting his first Pokemon. I'm pretty sure we haven't. So there's still no decisive answer whether or not they actually do that or they're just hiding it for now. Because, you know, it seems like such a minor thing, but it's that type of detail that Pokemon fans would go nuts over. Oh, they would. People were people were very sad when the following feature was gone from HeartGold Soul Silver. A lot of people wanted that in black and white. A lot of people were thinking, oh, well, Black 2 and White 2 is naturally going to add that because it was gone, but no, it didn't. And mm -hmm. I think it was just a case of it would be too many sprites to redraw with the new visual style and how the camera was going all over the place compared to how it did in the more top-down games. And... I don't know, maybe it was... I remember that they were saying that XY was going to have a lot of Pokemon in the in the overworld, but it ended up not really doing that, probably just because of system limitations, if I had to make a guess. Yeah. Um, on that note, I hope that this game runs at a better frame rate, because <laughs> if you played it on an original 3DS, oh my god, it's very clear that they wanted you to play it on a new 3DS. Oh yeah, I, like, I, had, I have to play it on the classic 3DS in order to do recordings and all that, and you could just feel it straining against the hardware. Uh, but of course, they, if they made it just new 3DS exclusive, that cuts down on sales. So they can't do that. And they were they were pushing the system already. How are they going to make it work and do it for what seems like to be a director's cut for Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon? I don't don't know at all. It might be better streamlined or better um, optimized. I'm not really sure, but. Um... That was the problem, was that if, if you played Sun and Moon on a regular 3DS, even though I really like the game, mm -hmm. I could I could understand people not enjoying the game, because I had to play it on an original 3DS for uh, the Sleep Versus mm -hmm. um, a few months ago, because uh, they were the only recording units that we had access to, and everyone had to use the same hardware, otherwise they'd have an unfair advantage. And I remember thinking, gosh, this is what people who had launch systems had to go through? Oof, like... Mm -hmm. I could not blame you for not enjoying the game if it ran at that pace, because at the beginning of a double battle, the trainers just stand there like ragdolls for <laughs> 10 seconds waiting to throw their Pokeball. Yeah. It, on the on the new 3DS, it stops for about one second mid-animation, but it's hardly noticeable. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think that's probably a good reason why there aren't a lot of double battles in the game, and definitely not a lot of, uh, and, and no triple battles or rotation battles. Yeah, triple and rotation were gotten rid of. It's the first time that a whole battle system was taken out completely that was supposed to be major. It, it, it's interesting how they tweak, and, you know, it, it's, I don't know, I'm I'm still intrigued by Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, and, you know, they even have that sort of kind, maybe potential kind of tease for a new Necrozma form, which wouldn't be you know, two out of the uh, two out of nowhere, considering you know, uh, in platinum, blanking on his name, uh, but he got a Giratina? new form as well. Gir Giratina got a new form as well, and Giratina Shailen got did. new forms. Kiram yeah. got two. Yeah, new forms in 
new versions is a very common I, I, thing in Pokemon. So having I, the I Crows guess Zygarde got some too. That is true. He did. I could definitely see the Crozma getting a new form and like a pure light form. That's that's interesting. I, 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 I can see a lot of potential with that. There's a lot of mystery surrounding him. I remember thinking that he was going to be the focus of the next Pokemon game, similar to how Zygarde had a pretty decently major role in Sun and Moon, because not a lot of him was answered. They were saying that he is similar to the Ultra Beasts, but does not appear to be one at the same time, and the Pokedex seem very unclear about what actually he was. And then on top of that, he's just this dark prismatic thing that is capable of controlling light. Yeah, and that's an interesting aspect, especially because of the whole sun and moon uh, part of, you know, the the trio. And, I mean, you can't catch Necrozma until after you finish the Ultra Beast quest, so obviously there's a connection there. Why does he only show up then? And then, of course, on the map, we have a giant frickin' Ultra Wormhole on the map causing chaos, apparently, on Coney Island. So, something's going down. The Ultra... I mean, if it isn't obvious by the name, the Ultra Beasts seem to have a bigger role. In actually, now that I'm thinking about that, do you think we'll see new Ultra Beasts? That, I will say outright no. I I think that more new forms are possible. New Alolan forms I'm a bit shakier on, and I was saying I, I'm leaning more toward a no on that one. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say outright no on new Ultra Beasts. New Ultra Beast forms, maybe? Um, <laughs> I don't know, maybe you could make a Hanukkah version of Zerkatry or something like that. I don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> but... <laughs> Um, I could see new forms. I don't think new Ultra Beasts. Hmm. Yeah, I'd agree with that, because it's very rare for them to add all new Pokemon. And I know for Ultra Beasts having this whole different classification and everything, they're still considered Pokemon. They're still catchable. So adding Ultra Beasts after uh, Marshadow would be a pretty big deal. Really quick, can I just say how messed up I find that, that they're considered Pokemon and they're catchable and all that? For all we know, <laughs> because they're from, they're beings from an alternate universe that are incapable of communicating with us. For all we know, Pheromosa could be the dominant species of Earth and basically humans on the other end. <laughs> I mean, there was that one character in Sun and Moon positing, like, what happens in the Pokeball? What happens when we send them back and forth? What's it like in the PC? Uh, those are some really deep in, in uh, existential questions there. <laughs> there was an interview with Masada a while back where he answered that question saying that he felt like the inside of the PC was like a luxury hotel. I mean, that's a nice way to look or, at it. Or the it. inside of the Pokeball. We've seen what the inside of the PC is like because it's the Pokepelago. That is true. So it is a tro- it's basically a tropical island getaway, uh, and then Masada was saying he thinks the inside of the Pokeball is a lot like a luxury hotel. Mm-hmm. I, w- I always like to imagine that the luxury ball is plush on the inside and has <laughs> velvet sheets on a bed or something like that. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. But I, I do agree with you. I, 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 as cool as it would be to cool, to see some new Ultra Beasts, I don't think it's going to happen. And it's it's weird to think that we've only... That there's only one mystical Pokemon and we've... I mean, as far as typical legendaries, there's only the three. With talking about seeing more about the Ultra Beasts, I think we will learn more about them. But I'd like, without saying too much out of spoilers, I don't want to spoil anything about Sun and Moon for people who might still have not played it. Um, for, um, I'd like a return to Ultra Space and seeing more of it. Yes, yes. I hope there's something like out of Platinum where you get to explore that other world and actually do more within it. Like, give it its own dungeon. Yes, I, I think that would be very good. The Distortion World. I remember that um, a lot of people who hadn't seen Platinum before in the comments were saying they could not believe just how that last act of the game was. They weren't expecting anything from it, but they were really amazed by it. Mm-hmm. I've not played Platinum myself. I just I, I started playing it, and then for some whatever reason, I just stopped. Did couldn't really get back into it we wasn't ready for a I mean everything version. moves at a speed of two miles an hour so. <laughs> yeah <laughs> but I am looking forward to you know I am doing my eventual Nuzlocke runs of as through the series and I am looking forward to Platinum just to see what is new like I've never seen Platinum before what's different about it I'm ex- I'm actually kind of interested to see what they added to it and uh, exactly what the distortion world added to it like I have no idea if you can even catch Pokemon in the distortion world I, I know that little tell you really quick is not to take up too much time uh, on another topic though but um uh the main bad guy of platinum is really cool a lot of people seem to like him Mm -hmm. yeah i remember him being very interesting just from the uh the uh pokemon generations uh anime 
Like he mm-hmm. seemed he seemed pretty interesting in his goals and exactly what he decided to do. Like that's an interesting take on the villain and what he uh, ultimately decides. I don't know. I, I'm I'm curious what they'll do here because there's the ways that they could remix this story could make some pretty major changes to everything. And on that note, yeah. what I really hope that they don't do mm-hmm. is a certain character that they don't again try to pull the oh they're you know probably a good guy maybe they're bad and all that stuff and <laughs> treat it like a big twist again i i hope that they don't do that that's something that i really hope they they don't do <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah we'll see we'll, we'll see what they exactly do with this one but I, the, the thing that comes back to me is I don't want to write this off yet. I don't want to say, oh, this is going to be terrible. I'm still... No, no, neither do I. ...interested in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. But it is very weird to be three months out and know so little about it. I do think the information is going to start picking up, though. If not if not for the rest of this month, then definitely by the end of September. I mean, it has to be at that point, honestly, because they have a, basically a month and a half of, at the end of September. <laughs> Uh, personally, I think we're overdue for a Nintendo Direct, and we might hear more there, but that's kind of for another day, because this isn't really a discussion about that, <laughs> but, you know, we don't know the date of Fire Emblem Warriors, and that's apparently coming out in the next three months somehow, and <laughs> we don't know the release dates of a bunch of the Amiibo that are supposed to be coming out in another month or two, we don't know the release dates of actually quite a lot of things, and... You know. mm-hmm. We have, we still like they keep saying Xenoblade Chronicles two is two is coming out this year, and I don't know. I still need my date <laughs> until I get a date. I am not fully convinced. <laughs> no, I agree. I agree. Yep. All right. Well, I think that covers it for our Ultra Sun and uh, Ultra Moon discussion. So thank you for watching. And if you like this video, be sure to like us on Facebook and Twitter at Game Explain. And Emil, where can they find you at? Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, the usual places. Uh, I am Chugga Conroy. Awesome. And of course, make sure to subscribe to Game Explained for more on Pokemon and other things gaming as well. Until next time, bye.